Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new decoder just uh, released by Soundtracks. And this is one that um, I've had now since oh, early December. And I've been sitting on it because the folks at Soundtracks uh, uh, needed to get it into production. And uh, so what I have is a prototype. And we're going to take a look at that. And then I'm going to show you how to install it in a steam locomotive. So stick around for the video. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. I'm going to focus down here on the workbench where I've got one of these decoders, and let you take a look at it, and then I'll run through some of the specifications of it. And then, as I said, we'll go ahead and do an installation uh, in a steam locomotive. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Well, here it is, the brand new uh, Soundtracks TSU N18 decoder. And this particular one has the Steam 2 sound package installed on it. Now, let me go ahead and show you just how small this is, because that is a U.S. quarter here. So that decoder sits on that quarter. Uh, the size format, it comes out at about uh, 25 millimeters by 10 millimeters. That's going to fit in a lot of really skinny locations. Um, surprisingly, this is rated at uh, 1 amp stall current. So just about any HO scale locomotive and smaller locomotives being made today will be, uh, be able to be powered by this locomotive. It also has a one watt, eight ohm audio output. So, you know, a standard speaker that's being used for, or being made for uh, installation in, in locomotives will work with this. So sugar cube speaker, it's perfect for that. And uh, for even some of the larger uh, speakers available out there. The production model that uh, models that will be uh, released at the end of May uh, will have all of the standard Tsunami uh, sound packages available. So like this one here is the Steam uh, sound package. So it has on it uh, 10 different Steam Chuff sound sets. It has 12 different bells and 90 whistles to choose from. So you're going to be able to match a prototype locomotive for sure, as far as the whistles go. And, you know, it's got all the other standard uh, steam locomotive type sounds. So everything that you've been using on your larger Tsunami uh, decoder uh, sound packages will be available on all of these. So it's going to be a really fully functioned uh, uh, package. It has six function outputs each rated at 100 milliamps. So that's enough to do, uh, you know, the normal amount of, of lighting. I mean, you consider that an LED only pulls about 20 milliamps. You can run several LEDs even off of one uh, lighting function, for example. So you're not seeing any real trade-offs, as far as I can see, uh, uh, due to the smaller size. You're not losing the functionality. You're not losing uh, the uh, number of, of, of sounds in the sound packages. And it's just getting to be better and better <laughs> as these things are being produced. Uh, it has the standard 16-bit sound output. So you're getting that great uh, soundtracks sound as well. Now, this particular uh, format, I'll flip it over and show you the other side because it has the small Next 18 connector here. So that's an 18 pin or whatever you want to call it connector there. And that just plugs into a socket on a motherboard. Um, unfortunately, right now, these things are so new here in the US that the only companies that I am aware of that have been making uh, any motherboards in uh, factory equipped locomotives are uh, Atlas and Intermountain. So we're still waiting for the rest of the uh, market to come online. One issue, I guess, is that uh, it's hard for them to go ahead and, uh, and start investing in installing these sockets in locomotives until their decoder is available. And yet the manufacturers of the decoders uh, are stuck in a position where 
uh, it's not uh, economically feasible for them in most cases to produce these new decoder formats when there's not a lot of locomotives out there available for them to be plugged into. So it's one of those catch-22 situations. But I think I'm glad to see, you know, um, I'm glad to see our friends at Soundtrex making the, uh, taking the chance and producing the, uh, this new format for us. In addition to that, now this is right now, these are only going to be available initially uh, for the North American market, that is for North American uh, locomotives. Uh, eventually, they do plan to release the, uh, the UK versions. They do have, you know, sound packages available in both steam and diesel right now uh, for other uh, soundtracks decoders for UK models, and they will be releasing uh, UK versions. But they're, you know, facing the same problem that a lot of companies that use electronics these days are facing in that parts are very hard to get right now. And uh, they told me the other day that they're having to place orders 52 weeks in advance for some of these parts. So, uh, and that was why uh, this one was held up uh, in, in, in production so long. I got this prototype in early December and in, they're just coming out now. And you know, the same problem with parts. We will be seeing these for the North American market soon. Uh, and even though there's not a lot of, of locomotives being produced uh, for them, uh, Nick at uh, Nick Santo at Nick's Trains has told me that he will have a uh, decoder buddy uh, out very soon that will have the socket for these. So at least you will be able to uh, purchase a, a decoder buddy and install it in a, uh, a new DCC uh, compatible locomotive and you'll be able to uh, plug in one of these uh, soundtracks, Next 18 decoders, if that's the way you decide to go. Now that's a quick look at the decoder. What I want to do now is pull out a, uh, a steam locomotive uh, and, and do an installation for you. Because this particular steam locomotive is one from the UK and they have got a great innovative uh, technique an approach for using these to make installations in locomotives almost plug and play. So let me show you that. Okay, this is a, uh, as I said, a UK locomotive. It's a, a 260 Mogul uh, wheel configuration, as you can see. And they, uh, they released these about, uh, oh, last fall, fall of 2020. And I picked one up. Uh, the great thing about this is uh, this company has, uh, I believe starting with this locomotive, maybe an earlier one, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, they have come up with an innovative uh, way to install these Next18 format decoders. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, they give you this little tool here, and it's got this uh, knife edge here on one end of it. And you're supposed to be able to take that and pop off the front of the uh, the steam the door here, but I've never been able to get that to work. I usually have to take a knife blade. Let me see if I can get to this here. There we go. Now that's the hardest part is getting that. Uh, door off and I'm going to separate the tender from the body and that's just like that and what we have here is if you look inside you can see that there is a PC board in there and on that board there is a little hole and if you look here real close you can see there's a little raised nibble uh, nipple here well that goes in to the small hole on the board and then you can just pull and that extracts this little PC board. Now right here on the PC board you'll see, if I can get this out of the way, we have a small circuit board mounted already. So let me go ahead, get my uh, tweezers here and we'll pop that out that's the dummy board. And you can see there's the little uh, 
next 18 board right or the next 18 plug right there. And right here on this one is the socket. So all I have to do then, and it's got this little arrowhead that points to, or triangle that points to pin location number one. And so you want to line that up here so that the decoder is just going to fit right in there and plug in. So that's all it is to that. But that's not all there is to this decoder. Because right here on the bottom, there is this little black tray. Now, I can then take a, uh, I believe this is a 12 by 15, let me see here, something in that 11 by 15, okay. But you can take this little guy here, the little sugar cube speaker, and you'll see right here on the bottom, there are two little silver spots, LS minus and LS plus. So loudspeaker. So that provides the electrical context for these two little spring clips on the bottom of the, or on the uh, top here of our speaker. So I can just drop this in here, put it in like that. And it's best if you use some kind of sealant around the outside of the speaker. And uh, they also make um, gaskets, uh, double, double adhesive gaskets that you can put on these sugar cube speakers to do the sealing. Because you won't get a good airtight seal just the way I'm going to show you. But then you can just take that little sugar cube speaker in its new enclosure and attach it to the bottom of this board. And now you've got a decoder and a speaker that you haven't done any soldering at all on and you're ready to reinstall it in the locomotive. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll bring the little locomotive up and basically, I don't know if you can see them in here, it's hard to get the lighting, but there's a couple of ridges in here that the decoder board slides into and then you just push it in and give it a good firm push with your finger because there's a slot in there that it slides into. And that's all there is to it. That's the installation. That makes it so easy to do a, a decoder installation, particularly in a steam locomotive. And of course, uh, once they get these uh, sockets available in all of our diesel locomotives, it'll be that easy to plug in the uh, decoder and you'll be ready to run. And if they provide a, a similar type of mechanism for mounting a speaker without having to do any soldering, that'll be even better. Now, I don't use that, uh, the sugar cube speaker in this. And the reason for that is I uh, went with a different speaker uh, located in the tender. And I wanna show you that because it's a special Zemo Dumbo speaker. So let me pull that and get ready. Okay, so this tender uh, was held together with four little uh, screws. There's one in each of the corners. I went ahead and pulled them out to make this go quicker. And um, what I'm gonna do is just pop this off and show you what's inside. Now the, uh, the folks at DAPL as part of their uh, design on these uh, included a black and a red wire for connecting to a sugar cube speaker or any other speaker you want to use in here. And I'll show you here in the bottom, they have an oval cutout in case you wanted to use a typical oval speaker. This one here though is a Zemo, it's called a Dumbo. This particular one fortunately sizes out perfectly to fit in the opening and because of the design of the uh, sound chamber you have your speaker here and then you have this very large let me get this out that's the easiest way you have this very large sound enclosure here so it it, uh, it helps to produce a much higher uh, volume and also a very good uh, bass compared to your standard sugar cube speakers. And these are available from uh, Zemo dealers. I know I got this one from Streamline Backshop, and uh, you know by now I buy a lot of stuff from, uh, from the folks there. 
So basically then, you've got your two wires that come from your locomotive where the decoder is located. They come back through a little PC board connector, and I'll show you that in a second. And then you just have to solder these two. So that's the only soldering you have to do, is just solder these two wires to the Dumbo speaker. Now, what size speaker is that? Let me look. Let me see. We can measure that out. It comes at about... Oh, something around 12, 11 or 12 by... Eighteen, maybe? Something in that realm. And I'll look that up and include that information in the description uh, for those of you who might want to look at these for installation in other uh, locomotives. Because, you know, these would be great uh, to install in, say, some of your small tender steam locomotives where you could still get one of these in there. Um, but at any rate, so that's how easy this is to install. So I'm going to put this back together, and then I'm going to show you the connection here between the steam locomotive engine and the tender. Okay, so I got the tender back together. So now let's look at the, the connector board uh, or method that they came up with uh, for these because it's, it's also innovative and something that they're using on all of their steam locomotives now. And you can see here, uh, there is a little uh, PC board right here. It's got two metal traces have to get that so you can see it without blinding the camera. But there's two metal traces on the top and two on the bottom. And those provide the uh, connection for pickup wire uh, from the two sides of the uh, tender uh, wheels. And then the two wires that go back to provide sound for the decoder. And then this just connects in here in a little socket on the bottom of the locomotive. And you just push it together like that. And that's all there is to connecting it up. We'll see how well that's going to last here. Let me zoom out some. Okay, so that's how it all goes together. So let's go ahead and put this on the track, and I'll let you hear how the uh, Tsunami decoder sounds. And there's even a BR steam whistle on here that sounds very much clo very close to the whistle that was used on these locomotives. So for now, I'm getting by until they come out with the UK version. Okay, I'm going to bring the steam locomotive up and uh, stop it in front of you. We'll play, you know, we'll play around with the uh, with the whistle. Um, I'll I'll ring the bell for you. I'm not sure what bell it is uh, because you know, on British steam locomotives, they didn't have bells. But uh, we'll go ahead and do that, and you can listen to some of the other sounds uh, and see it's the standard uh, sound package that you would find uh, on uh, a Tsunami Steam 2 uh, decoder. And I just used the, uh, the small steam sound uh, for this particular one. So I'm going to go ahead and switch microphones so I can pick up the, uh, what's going on with the locomotive. And I'm not going to be talking.
Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, I think this is going to be a, an important development for DCC sound because it's going to allow uh, soundtracks as well as other manufacturers to produce sound decoders for in-scale locomotives, for very small HO scale locomotives. And uh, pretty soon we're going to get to the point where we're mainly limited by uh, the size of the speakers again because the decoders are getting so small now. And I'm hoping that the American manufacturers are going to take a note as to the, uh, the new uh, products coming out of Dapple in England uh, with their steam locomotive that I showed you. Because that makes it just very, very easy to install a sound decoder uh, in a locomotive. Uh, whether or not you use the, the really small uh, sugar cube speaker or the Zemo Dumbo that I showed you that I used in the tender of the, uh, the Dapple locomotive. So that's about it for today. Uh, have a great week and we'll see you here on Friday with another video. Bye now.